All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies course, I've been creating a series of video presentations based off of the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development series. I am currently under the server side programming Express and Node.js section, and we're going through the we are going through the uh, tutorial that we're creating on this local library. And we're up to the Mongoose pro, um, primer. As it says, this section shows an overview of how to connect a mo your Mongoose to a MongoDB database, how to define a schema and a model, and how to make basic queries. They do mention in here that the primer is heavily, heavily influenced by the Mongoose Quick Start, which is right here on NPM. So they've got some information here and also the official that documentation, which is out on mongoosejs.com. So Mongoose is installed in your project, in your pit, added to package.json like anything else using NPM. So let's first do the install. And here is one case I think I would like to stop this run. So I'm going to add this. That's in there. I'm going to clear. And I'm going to start the server up again. So like that. Now, did I have to do that? Not really. I'm not real sure. All right. Sorry about that. My dog got loose. So, as it says, Mongoose is installed. We just did that. We did the install of Mongoose. Installing Mongoose adds all the dependencies, including the MongoDB database driver, but does not install the MongoDB database itself. If you want to install a MongoDB server, you can download installer installers from the link that's shown. For this tutorial, we'll be using MongoDB Atlas, which is a cloud-based and free database service. And we'll use, as it says, the free tier to provide the database. This is suitable for development and makes sense for the tutorial because it makes the installation operating system independent. You're using DAAS, which is Database as a Service. All right. It says there's also an approach that we could use, I should say, instead. All right. So Mongoose, as it says, requires a connection to a MongoDB database. You can require and connect to a locally hosted database with a Mongo, mongoose.connect command as shown before, or below, I should say. So we're requiring it. We're setting it up. This thing is basically, for lack of better words, it's kind of boilerplate code that you've got to add in order for it to make this work. Then you set up your connection. And if for some reason, we're, we're also binding this, so if for some reason it didn't work, we should get an error. All right. Now, I do believe we're going to take this eventually, probably put it in our app.js file, but we'll see. All right. You can get the default connection object with mongoose.connection once connected. The open event is fired on the connection instance. If you need to create additional connections, you can use the create connection. This takes the same form of database URI and returns a connection object. Okay. All right. Let's talk a little bit about models and schemas. Models are defined using the schema interface. The schema, as it says, allows you to define the fields stored in each document along with their validation requirements and their default values. In addition, as it says here, you can define static and instance helper methods to make it easier for you to work with different data types and also virtual properties that you can use like any other field but aren't actually stored in the database. And as it says there, They'll talk about these later on. Schemas are then compiled into models using the mongoose.model method. Once you have a model, you can use it to perform CRUD operations. So 
Each model maps to a collection of documents in the MongoDB database. The documents will contain the field schema types defined in the model schema. The code fragment below, as it says, shows how you might define a simple schema. Now, you probably have already figured this out, but we've got some of this stuff that we talked about before from our UML diagram. All right. In this case, and this is a very simple example, this schema has got only two fields in it. One called A underscore string, which is a type string, and one called A underscore date, which is type date. Models then are created from schemas using the mongoose.model method as shown right here. The first argument, as it says, is the singular name. Some model schema, some model of the collection that will be used to create your model. Mongoose will create the database collect connection for the above model, some model above. The second argument is the schema that we want to use to be able to create that. Once you've defined your model classes, you can use them again for your CRUD operations and run queries to get, you know, and even put, uh, put different criteria in to only get certain, you know, whatever it is you're looking for. All right, we'll get to that in a bit. A schema can have an arbitrary number of fields. Each one represents the a field in the documents stored in MongoDB. Why does this matter? Well, for instance, if this was the new schema, I'm not going to read these, but you see them. What if we didn't know somebody's age? Well, here we're saying it's required, so we, we could set a default if we wanted to, or we could put it in. But for instance, what if uh, living is a Boolean? But what if we don't know if an author is living or not living? Maybe the book was written in the mid-1900s, but we don't know exactly when the author was born. All right? So in that case, we could just omit it. Most of the schema types, as it says, are self-explanatory. The object ID, okay, the object ID that gets created for you is the equivalent of a primary key that we saw when we used a relational database management system like MySQL. The difference is the difference is that in MySQL we usually set it up as like an auto increment field and it was one, two, three, etc. But here where you use it, it's not set up like that at all. It's going to be a series of letters and numbers. All right, mixed, as it says, is an arbitrary schema type, and the brackets is going to represent an array or an array of items. As it says, you can perform JavaScript array operations on these, push, pop, etc. The code also shows both ways of declaring a field field name and type as a key value pair as they did with name. And field name followed by an object defining the type. All right. Okay. Mongoose provides built-in and customized or custom validators and synchronous and asynchronous validators. So it allows you to validate in different ways. The built-in validators are shown there. All schema types have the built-in required. So if it's set, as it says, it must be supplied. Numbers can have min and max, where for something like age, that makes sense. Strings have an enum, which specifies the set of allowable values for the field match which you can use to specify a regular expression. You can also have a max length and a min length if you want. So the example below, they modified it to show some of this stuff. So they've got, notice they've got eggs, which can be a minimum of a half dozen and a maximum of a dozen, for example. 
drink, which is of type string and can be either coffee, tea, or water, for example. All right, again, we will be going through stuff like this more and more as we go on. All right. Virtual properties, as it says, there are document properties that you can use to get and set that do not get persisted to MongoDB. Getters are useful for formatting or combining fields. Setters are useful for decomposing a single value into multiple values for storage. All right, it says the example in the documentation constructs and then deconstructs a full name virtual property, which is a combination of first name and last name. And that's easier, you know, typically it's easier to work with that one field, one combined or concatenated field as opposed to two fields. All right. A schema can also have instance methods, static methods, and query helpers. Instance and static methods are similar, but the obvious difference is each instance method is associated with a particular record. So each person, for example, has an H. All right. But when you talk about a static method, it's shared by all instances. So if I had a count of the total number of people I was creating, I might make that, you know, something like that into something static. Query helpers allow you to extend Mongo's chainable query builder API, which we will be looking at in the future. For example, allowing you to add a query by name in addition to the find, find one, find by ID. Again, we're going to be going over all this stuff as we go on. Once you've created your schema, you can use it to create models. The model represents a collection of documents in the database. You can use to search, while the model's instances represent individual documents that you can save and you can retrieve. So it says we provide a brief overview below. And that's all this is. All of this stuff that's in here is brief. We will be spending much more time guaranteed in the AWD 1111 class on this. All right. So all right. I don't know if I can get, I would like to get up to this setting up the uh, MongoDB database here. To create a record, you can define an instance of the model and then call save. All right, the example below it says, assumes that some model is a model that's already been created. Now again, if it doesn't make sense, we're gonna walk through an example of this in just a minute. Creation of records along with updates, delete, and queries are asynchronous operations. It says you supply a callback that is called when the operation completes. The API uses the error first argument convention. So the first argument in the callback must always be for to, to handle an error. If the API returns a result, that's provided as the second argument. You can also use create to define a model instance at the same time as you save it. All right. Every model has an associated connection this will be the default connection when you use mongoose.model. You create the new connection and call .model on it to create the documents on a different database. You can access fields in this new model using the dot syntax. All right, again, hopefully this will all become much more apparent as far as what's going on in here as we go on. You can search for records using some of these query methods. Why would you want to do that? Well, <clears throat> let's think of our library example. I might want a listing of, let's just assume, all the books that are available as science fiction books. All right. And then once I found that, I, I maybe have found the book I like, I might want to again query to find how many copies of that book there are. And if there's only one, let's say, is that copy available? All right. So as mentioned here, you can search for records using query methods specifying query conditions as a JSON document. And they show an example right here. Probably isn't going to make a boatload of sense right now. If you specify a callback as shown above, the query will execute immediately. The callback will then be invoked when the search has been completed. 
Note all callbacks in Mongoose use the pattern callback error result. If an error occurs, the error parameter will contain an error document and result will be null. And as opposed to if it's successful, then an error is null and the result will be populated with a query results. It is important to remember that finding not finding any results is not an error. All it means is there were no criteria that met what you were looking for. For instance, if it's the first day of class and let's say that I've got 20 students in my class and in the first day I walk in there and I go, okay, how many of you are more than 100 years old? And raise your hand. Well, there's a pretty good chance that no hands will go up. That doesn't mean that's, a, that's an invalid thing to ask for. It means there are no people in this case, no students that met that criteria. All right, if you don't specify a callback, then the API will return a value of type query, which can be used to build up the query and then execute it later using the exec method. All right, above there it says, we've defined the query conditions on the find method. We can also do this using a where function. We've talked about where. Where allows you to add extra criteria that's in there. All right, you utilize all this in conjunction with the find method. Notice there's a find by ID. All right, now what's, what's the advantage of using find by ID? Every document has a unique ID. Again, it's synonymous with a primary key. Find one finds a single document that matches the criteria. Find by ID and remove or update. All right, find one and remove or find one and update. As it says, those find a single document and perform the associated operation. There's also a count you can use to get the number of items that match whatever criteria you've added. And as mentioned, there's a lot more that you could do with queries. All right, we will look at all this as we go on in the class. You can create references from You can create references from one document model instance to another using the object ID schema field or from one document to many using an array of object IDs. All right, for example, it says the following schema defines authors and stories. Each author can have multiple stories, which we represent as an array of object IDs. Each story can have a single author in this case. The ref highlighted in bold below tells the schema to which model can be assigned to this field. We save our references by assigning the underscore ID value. This is all stuff that you're going to be working with. I guess you have to take my word for it for now. Our story document. All right, it says there our story document has an author referenced by the author's document ID. In order to get the author's information, you would write something like this. So we are going to be going through this and writing a succession of queries as we go on. While you can create schemas and models using any file structure you like, the authors here are highly recommending defining each model schema in its own module or file and then exporting that method to create the model. And they show this here. Again, if that doesn't make sense, you'll have to bear with me because okay, so we're going to start using it very soon. All right. It says you can then require and use the model immediately. Below is a show how it could be used. So in the next part of this lecture, we are going to look at how to set up the MongoDB database All right, for our library application.